Good evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect King of Games with the Emergency Forbidden list coming in November 5th. You one has to wonder what will be the top decks of the format. I'm going to be making a very valid case of why Infernoids can be a very good deck or possibly even a contender. Why you guys should expect to see them at your local level, regional level, or YCS level event, as well as providing you guys an in depth deck profile of an awesome deck. This is going to be epic, just like what it says in the title. Before we get into the deck profile, I just need you guys to hit the subscribe button and make sure that you hit the notification game because we just too strong over here. Without further ado, I present to you a competitive 60 card Infernoid deck profile. All right, guys, starting off with the monsters, two copies of Infernoid Onuku. This card is probably one of the more important cards to the deck, not only because it's a name to make Infernoid Tierra, but because upon its summon, it allows you to destroy all monsters on the field. Furthermore, by tributing a monster, you can negate a spell or trap card and banish it. Its 3K body is very easy to summon, seeing that you don't need to tribute monsters, and all you have to do is ban banish Infernoid monsters, hopefully from your graveyard, but can also be from your hand. Another really important Infernoid monster is two copies of Inferno Deviati. This actually, these guys I want to run more copies of, but it's not good to run multiple or th triple copies of these cards because you don't want to brick into them. Reasoning being is because they're excellent fusion targets, they're excellent Deviati targets, but more importantly, just summoning them themselves are really good as well. Deviati upon its summon allows you to heavy storm the board, destroying all spell and trap cards that aren't void. But even more importantly, you can tribute a monster to negate the activation of a monster effect and banish it. These two cards, couple really well with each other. Now, two copies of Inferno to Atondo, there will be times where you're like, man, Atondo's like kind of subpar. And then there's multiple times when your opponent summons a 2600 or a 2700 attack monster and you kind of need a Tondo because it's the biggest Infernoid monster that you can get without having to use three Infernoid resources to summon him. Furthermore, when he destroys a monster by battle, he can attack again in a row. That can be invaluable to the Infernoid strategy by clearing big boards with big monsters. Next is two copies of Seismus, the my most favorite Infernoid monster. And the reasoning behind it is because after Seismus battles, he can banish a card on the field and he does not target the big infernoid monsters not the huge ones also gain the effect of being able to tribute a monster to banish a card on your opponent's graveyard during either player's turn so seismus has a really a lot of banishment of value going on right now it's a pretty good card and then one copy of Infernoid Jet. Now, Infernoid Jet is really good for this reason. Um, it's a level six monster, so it allows you to make double Decatron with your Void Feast play. But even more importantly, against certain Pendulum matchups like a Pendulum deck or people that really need their extra deck, it forces them to get rid of cards from their extra deck upon attack decoration. It's a pretty good card in that retrospect. Can you see? All right, cool. Next is three copies of Infernoid Patrulla. These is going to round off the weaker Infernoid monsters. These monsters can only be summoned from your hand, but they provide some really good effects. Patrulla being able to destroy spell and trap cards between Deviati and Patrulla, you should be able to have no problems with back row. Three copies of Infernoid, uh, Infernoid, Infernoid Harddick, I mean Harmedick. What this card does, I swear, every single time I call him Harddick, she looks at me like, what kind of infernal monster is that? <laughs> well, Invernoid Harddick allows you to destroy monsters on the side of the field. The only bad part about both Petrula and Harmedick is that they can attack the turn they activate their effect. But it's fine. The reason why we play so many copies of this is Petrula allows you for instant rank 4 and synchro 8 plays. And Harddick allows you for a lot of things like synchro plays, XE plays. Just the fact that he's 3 opens up so many possibilities for the deck. Two copies of Infernoid Entra. This is also another card that opens up for your uh, rank 3 plays. And if you decide to play him Synchro 6 plays, it can bounce cards on the field. And it's 2,000 defense. That 2K booty is nothing to be... Uh, you know, to doubt, because like it come in it comes in handy quite a few times. The little guys only require one Infernoid monster to banish, so they're relatively easy to summon. But you pay for it being uh, you. Blah. Excuse me. You pay for it by only being able to use their effects on your opponent's turn, and it can only be summoned from hand. Last is three copies of Infernoid Decatron, the card that breaks this rule. Uh, when this card is normal summon or special summon, you can send one Infernoid monster from your deck to your graveyard. This card gains that monster's level, and even more importantly, it gains that card's effect. So being able to special summon double Decatron and Sajet, use both Decatron's effect to send Deviati and Anuku, allows you to stop monster effects and spell effects, as well as giving you some board presence. These cards are amazing. Also, keep in mind it's 200 defense. It's pretty important when we get deeper into this deck profile. I believe it's 20 Infernoids, and that is pretty much it for the Infernoid monsters we run. 
to the non-Infernoid monsters. Three copies of Han Raiden Hand of Light Sworn. This card's pretty good. I mean, being able to mill two cards when it's summoned, or once per turn, it's Ignition Effect, and then being able to mill two additional cards during the end phase, coupled with Charge of Light Brigade, which allows you to mill three cards, you can probably get the ball rolling with multiple Raidens uh, throughout the game. This card is just pretty good, and it's a level four tuner. Three copies of Fire King Avatar Arvata. What Avatar Avata allows us to do is prevent us from being ashed when we activate that Grass is Greener. Now, a lot of people that have played Infernoid probably backed off of Infernoid because having your left arm offering or your Grass is Greener ashed kind of sucks. But Arvata does mitigate that by being able to destroy a fire monster on the field or hand, which isn't even a cost for Infernoid since most of them want to be in the graveyard anyways, to negate the activations of monster effects. Now, it's also a pressure card. You can summon this card after you finish summoning your Infernoid monsters to negate monsters effects as well. So it's a great form of negation. Three copies of Cyframe Gear Gamma. Now, this card is a nice cliche. It's like a little niche tech in here. Now, the reasoning behind me playing three copies of this card is because typically you can make it so your monsters are non-existent in an Infernoid deck. All of your Infernoid monsters allow you, well, except for Decatron, allow you to tribute a monster on your side of the field to perform a specific action, whereas the bigger Infernoid monsters negating card effects, or as the other Infernoid monsters getting rid of your opponent's cards in the graveyard, it can set you in a position where you have no monsters on the field. Then you can activate Cyframe Gear Gamma to negate your opponent's monster effects and special summon a driver for a quick synchro play. This card is just awesome in here. And then three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Now, I know Gammas and Joyous Springs are relatively expensive cards, so uh, a good a uh, budget option for Ash Blossom, I guess, is Ghost Ogre. And for Cyframe Gear Gamma, I mean, you got to work with me here. I'm trying to get you guys as budget as possible. I just took off $210 from, from your budget. I think I did a pretty good job. Next is two copies of Fairy Tale Snow. This card is really good. Now, the reason why I don't play three is because I don't want to see multiple Fairy Tale Snows uh, in my hand or in my graveyard. I don't want to open Fairy Tale Snow. I just want her in the graveyard with a whole bunch of other cards for her to banish. She does kind of get in the way because you're going to be putting some spots where you might have to banish an Infernoid monster, but her effect is, is amazing. Her being a trap monster, being able to special summon it to your opponent's side of the field, and then flip a monster face down, also being fodder for Infernoid monster's effects being able to tribute her to negate activations or banish cards from your opponent's graveyard is A1. And then last is, of course, the side frame gear driver, or the side frame driver to special summon with the Gamma. Keep in mind, when driver is sent from the deck to the graveyard, which was a pushing point for me playing driver, when it's sent from the deck to the graveyard, you can still activate Gamma and special summon driver from your graveyard. So that's pretty damn dope. Also, both of these monsters can be used for Infernoid uh, effects later on in the game if you decide to summon those. That's it for the monsters. That 35 monsters. That's huge, and that's why we play 60 cards, because there's so many options. For spells, three copies of Pot of Desires, cards free. I mean, like, if, if you ever wanted a freer card in here, uh, hypothetically, you don't draw Grasses Green or a Left Arm Offering, just Desires. Make your 60-card deck a 50-card deck. You activate the second Desires, you make your 50-card deck a 40-card deck. It doesn't matter. Now, when you start activating three copies of Desires, you're getting a little overboard. But we do play three to see at least one, sometimes two. It it's, doesn't really matter. Also, with Cypher and Lord Omega, we can shuffle those cards that we need back into the graveyard. Next is three copies of Void Imagination. This card leads you to the land of imagination. Literally, every time I play this card, I think of Willy Wonka and how many um, dreams that we could have and the, the imaginary... Okay, look, I'm going to stop fucking with you cards. What this card allows you to do is Fusion Summon Infernoid Tiara, a really good card for this deck because Tiara... Shit, spicy. A card that can surge void, Im void imagination is three copies of Void Vanishment. Now, what Void Vanishment does is that discarding a card, you can add one Void card from your deck to your hand. This could include uh, uh, Into the Void if you guys want to play it. I decided not to play it. But more importantly, I think if people are, don't see the value of this card, is when an Infernoid monster banish, battles, you can banish the Infernoid monster and that card. So in case you ever go and get some monster that just is hard to get over, or you have a little Infernoid monster, Monster that you want to get over this card before you commit other resources to, people sleep on that effect. It's pretty good. Next is three copies of Fire Formation Tinky. This is to search Fire King Avatar Avatar from our deck to our hand. Kind of important seeing that that card does stop Ash Blossom. If they decide to Ash Blossom the Tinky, then shit, you just activate grass and you go on about your day. Three copies of Left Arm Offering. Now, this card's really good because it allows us to search grass is greener. I want to say almost every single time I search grass is greener, sometimes Void Imagination because that card is that busted. But 
you know, like I said, grass is greener. Three copies of Charge the Light Brigade. Now, we only run three copies of Charge for the three copies of Raiden, um, and a lot of people say it's a risk, but it really isn't a risk when you factor in that you need to mill cards, and Charge the Light Brigade is a free three mill, and seeing that you're going to be milling so many cards, the odds of you milling one copy of Charge the Light Brigade and one copy of Raiden, or even multiples of those cards are high, or the odds of you seeing multiples and them being dead are even lower. Uh, one copy of that grass is greener, or that grass looks greener. Um, if you open this card the odds of you winning go up drastically just because your opponent is more than likely playing a 40 card deck and you're playing a 60 card deck you're going to be able to mill 20 cards from your deck to your graveyard getting this ash is probably the bane of existence which is why we play fiery king avatar avata it's also a good card another reason why i play avatar avata is because it, it, it has 200 defense and that allows me to play some techie cards like rekindling so what rekindling does is throw some of his mini monsters from my graveyard to my side of the field with 200 defense or less Fire King, Avatar, Avata, and Infernoid Decatron all have 200, you know, defense or less. And that's six monsters that you can run. Hypothetically, you can summon up to five monsters off of Rekindled Link and gain so many effects. It was just too spicy, too techy, not too, or too pass up. Uh, one copy of Future Fusion. I'm not a huge fan of Future Fusion, but I see the vision behind this card. Did I do it? D d no, no, I see the vision because it's, it's the future and... Okay, anyways, um, biggest reason why I play this card, I'm not even going to lie to you, swag. That's I'm, I'm dead ass. I would be playing Raigeki if it wasn't so swag. This is ultimate, you know. It's fucking swag. But if you do get to resolve this card for your next standby phase, you win. And I felt that sometimes you got to take those risks. Like, uh, being able to send every Infernoid monster from your deck to your graveyard is like, I mean, it's 20 fucking Infernoids, like... That's good. Like I, I, I just have to play those risky cards. And then one copy of One for One. Uh, that's gonna special summon Decatron from your hand or from your deck to your side of the field and enable its effect. Uh, last is three copies of Void Feast. This card is one of the best reasons why Infernoids exist in 40 card or 60 card form. By discarding or sending a Void card from your hand or field to the graveyard, you can summon three Infernoid monsters or up to three Infernoid monsters from your deck to your side of the field, but their levels must equal up to eight. So what you can do is summon a Sajet and two Decatrons. You can summon a Decatron and a Seismus. You can summon any combination of cards as long as it fulfills eight and be able to provide some pressure to your opponent just off of Void Feast. Sometimes Void Vanishment is going to search you to Void Feast, so it's even that much more free. The only thing you need is Void Vanishment. That's it for the main board at 60. I believe it's 25 spells and traps, three traps, 22 spells to 25 monsters. That's the ratio that we're, ro we're rolling with. Uh, for the extra deck, uh, two copies of Infernoid Tierra. Card's nasty. I, the reason why I play two is because I play Future Fusion and three Void Imaginations. It isn't often that you can make this card twice, but in the event that you make this card twice, bro, you there. I'm telling you, you there. You not even sauce. You sauce. It looks like you need to put the Tiara on because you are the king of the game. Okay, I mean, you're not a woman, but... And, and tiaras for whatever on to the next card is three copies of elder entity entis now when tiara is summoned or tiara is summoned one of her effects is to send cards from both players extra deck to the graveyard now it would be a shame that not only you can disrupt your opponent's uh extra deck you would be able to send three copies of inferno entity entis when it's sent to the graveyard you can destroy cards on your opponent's side of the field so being able to summon tiara is essentially a blowout not only are you going to be sending inferno monsters from your deck to your graveyard you're going to be spell summoning mo uh you're going to be sending entis from your extra deck to the graveyard to not only fuel fairy tale snow but to potentially destroy a massive amount of cards on your opponent's side of the field i'm telling you she's She's just too good to ignore. Two copies of Psy Frame Lord Omega. This card is so easily made between um, your Raidens, between your Decatrons, being able to manipulate its level. Also in between your Psy Frame combo, it's very easy to make. And more importantly, this can shuffle this back into the deck for another effect of that. I've done it. It's nasty. I'm telling y'all. Uh, one copy of Black Rose Dragon and one copy of Michael Arc uh, Lightsworn. I thought that Black Rose Dragon was going to be really good in this format. Seeing that a lot of people uh, will commit to boards, knowing that if you do play evenly matched, well, fuck, you know, you got it. They lose the battle phase or they can stop it. But they don't see the Black Rose Dragon coming along out of nowhere, synchro summoning, blowing up boards, and then summoning Infernal Monster from your graveyard. The Michael is just really nasty. He also shuffles in those Raidens. 
which has came up like I believe once maybe, uh, you know, for this Charger Light Brigade. Uh, one copy of Minerva and one copy of Dante. I would love to run more copies of uh, rank three and rank fours, but I didn't think that there was um, more important light sword or more important rank monsters than Dante or Minerva. I just didn't see myself making anything else other than getting deeper into my strategy. One copy of Biko Bulker. Uh, the best thing about Lynx is that they're not ranks or levels. So anytime you link summon in Infernoids, it doesn't count towards your Infernoid limit. So make as many link monsters as possible. One copy of Gaia Saber, because for that exact same reason, Proxy Dragon for that exact same reason, and Akahistic Magician. Now this card is pretty nasty in here. I can't wait until uh, the Grinder Golem combo. I, I introduced that to you guys. It's gonna be really interesting to, to combo Akahistic uh, or Akasic with Grinder Golem, but also more importantly, it is just a nutty card. Uh, the level unit Infernoid deck is something that I also wanted to mess with, but I wanted to go with what I knew right now, and I'll probably show you those uh, in a different combo video, but literally, this card opens up so many opportunities for the Infernoid strategy. That is it for the extra deck. Now for the side deck. Now, I know you guys can be like, Cali Effect, I didn't even know you can do that. Some of y'all gonna be like that, other y'all gonna already know. So, three copies of Jinzo. Man. So, building this deck... Uh, or building every deck for right now, uh, my biggest problem is evenly matched. And I was like, damn, Cali Effect, how you gonna play around evenly matched? Because not only do Infernoid monsters have a, they have a pretty decent way to play away evenly matched, but I want it to be 100% sure. Now, Jinzo secures two things for me. First of all, it says fuck Paleo. Fuck traps, whatever. It's very easy to summon. You summon an Infernoid, you tribute it for a Jinzo. Not hard at all. The second thing is that you can't evenly match me, so I don't have to get rid of my Infernoid resources to try uh, to stop your evenly match. I have Jinzo on the field. What the fuck are you going to do? Literally. Now you just wasted your time when I made Jinzo. Uh, two copies of Cyber Dragon Core and one copy of Cyber Dragon. Um, what I've noticed about this deck is cards like I expect heroes to get more play. I expect monsters that rely on the extra monsters only, the extra deck to get more play. So Cyber Dragon Core is actually here for the sauce copies of Chimera Tech Mega Fleet Dragon. I get rid of their monster and their extra deck. I make Chimera Tech Mega Dragon. It's probably going to be game for them, especially when I tribute it for a Jinzo, because that, that, that's still there. Uh, one copy of Raigeki, uh, three copies of Twin Twisters, uh, Board Clear and Back Row Clear. I don't really see me needing Twin Twisters like to an ultimate maximum amount, but it's there just in case. Uh, and then the super last ultra sauce combo part of the tech is three copies of Fiend Comedian. Now, Fiend, Fiend Comedian is a nasty card in here because it gives my opponent a proposition. So first, if my opponent has a loaded graveyard, needs their graveyard resources. What Fiend Comedian does is if I get it right, you lose your graveyard and you lose the duel. But even more importantly, if I get it wrong, I get the same cards from the top of my deck to the graveyard, which means I put Infernal Monsters to the graveyard, possible fairy tale snow targets, which means you lose the duel. It really puts the opponent in a very bad position. Now, it's only really good against decks that can really fill the graveyard fast, so that's why I regulate it to the side deck instead of the main deck. Uh, that's it for the Infernoid deck. It was really fun, the deck, to play. This deck's just awesome. I really love this deck. I hope you guys enjoy, and it probably will surprise a couple of people in the next coming events. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. What I have to say to y'all, actually, let me just look. First of all, I want you guys to like and comment on what you guys are like this video and share this video to all your friends if you think this video was awesome. They probably need some help with their Inferno strategy or could use some or take something to benefit from this deck profile. But more importantly, I want you guys to comment down below which of these decks do you guys want to see next on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and most of all, enjoy.